What's up guys and welcome to this edition of Garris TV. On today's show we're going to be talking about the MT Mountain Trainer running shoe from Topo Athletic. You may remember us taking a look at the RR from Topo late last year and in fact this is the split toe shoe. Maybe you remember seeing that. We also did a giveaway of the Topo Speed Trainer. Now when we talked about this I really really enjoyed this shoe. I feel like that freedom of the big toe gave so much really great ground feel, so much acceleration. Some people felt that this shoe had a little bit much in the way of arch support, which I'm not a huge fan of, but I didn't really notice much. I have a pretty high arch, so it wasn't a big deal. Now, in this shoe, the Topo MT, Topo has decided to go away from the split toe. There's still a little bit of that split toe heritage there. We're going to talk about that in just a second. Let's get into the outsole. So according to Topo, the MT is their ultimate and hybrid technology. Now what's great about that is that it's meant to be run on road a little bit if you need to, but it's also a trail shoe. Now, I went to my testing ground, which is Rabbit Mountain that I've talked to you guys about before, which got technical trail, it's got uh, not so technical trail, kind of single track stuff, it's got gravel, it's got sand, it's got rocks, it's got drops, it's got jumps. Um, and it's also got a nice section of flat road to hilly road outside that I can check this out on. Now, the lugs themselves, as you can see here, are really quite flat. It's not a cleat-like lug type of system on these shoes. That said, it really has a great full ground feel. You can also see that there's pretty much no space, no gap under the arch here. And that's also going to give you that full ground feel that we're going to talk about a little bit more in the ride section, but I felt it was worth mentioning here. So the blown rubber outsole extends fully from this little toe bumper here all the way back to the heel. There's not really any gaps where there's EVA foam. Again, we've talked about a lot of shoes in the past or in the past couple years trying to do away with sections of rubber where they can to cut some weight. Topo didn't really do that and the only sections where there are gaps in the rubber is right here, these two gaps in kind of the forefoot and then the front side of the arch which are going to allow a lot more flexibility. So I really think those are necessary otherwise you're going to have a pretty stiff uh, midsole because that full rubber outsole all the way down the shoe is definitely going to sacrifice that a little bit. The different types of terrain that I've run on this on, as I mentioned, road and then on trail, when I did so it's been rather cold for the large majority of that time. So I've run on this in dry trail, absolutely, and all those different types of trail, but I've also run this in snow and ice and mud because snow and ice make mud. So this is how it handled on those different things. On a road, really great ground feel. I was, I was kind of surprised. Again, that full four, that full foot feel. Good Lord, Susie sells, she sells seashells, but anyway. So that full foot feel is really great underfoot when you're on a road. We're gonna talk a little bit about that more again in the ride. Uh, obviously, there's not a whole ton of need for a super amount of traction on a road, so it performed as you would expect for a hybrid shoe that doesn't have, again, those cleat-like lugs. Now when it hit trails, it did a really great job and I really feel like the flexibility that they've given in the forefoot of this actually allows for quite a bit of adaptation to the trail. It allows you to move and really get the foot and the shoe under your body because it, it's not like it's a stiff thing that's underfoot. If your foot needs to move this way, the shoe can move with it. It's really very flexible and that's a great advantage to it. Now, on muddy trail, yeah. It got caked up. Most shoes are going to get caked up, to be very fair. It got caked up with mud, uh, depending on the type of mud. If it was kind of dry-ish mud, like most shoes that are not cleated shoes, because cleated shoes can really hold on to that stuff, it didn't really pick up a ton. It picked up some, but on wet mud, it really, really picked up quite a bit and became a little slick. However, one of the advantages of not having cleat laid lugs is that I could walk over to a rock, kind of kick it, and it would get rid of most of the mud and I was back to running. So good job there. On snow and ice. Now, any shoe, I don't care what shoe it is, if it's not studded with like carbide tips or something like that, it's not going to be great on smooth ice. It's simply not. It may be good on chunky ice and stuff that's been kind of roughed up. It may be okay on those. On slick ice, this did not perform well. It's But I don't expect any shoe to that doesn't have carbide tips or metal kind of like screws or what have you, traction device. So it performed exactly as any other shoe and is exactly as I expected. So keep that in mind. On chunky ice, it did a great job. Um, it, it did it just handle it kind of just like trails. Yes, in spots where it flattened out, it got a little bit slick, shall we say, but it did a decent job. On snow, it did a pretty good job. I was kind of 
pretty impressed. You know, we've had quite a bit of snow here in Colorado this year, and uh, it did a nice job really kind of gripping. If, you know, the type of snow that we have here is more powdery, so it offers a shoe a chance to really get purchase in that snow. If you live on the East Coast, you're going to have a little bit of a more icy kind of bald type snow that's going to probably be a little more slick in general. These did a good job on the snow that we have here, and uh, yeah, it was pretty comfortable. Kept me nice and warm. We're going to talk about that more in the upper. Um, I also wore these with Yak Tracks Run. We reviewed Yak Tracks Run a couple weeks ago right here. Bam. And Yak Tracks Run, I ran in these. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about this more in the midsole section, but they worked really well with this due to the triple density EVA foam in the midsole. So that's the outsole. Now let's talk about the midsole. Ever since their shoes came out, one of the things that you cannot deny Topo is quality. They've done a great job with construction, really intelligent design. And even if you didn't like that split toe, you had to admit that holding the thing in your hand felt like you were kind of holding like the Cadillac of shoes, if you will. Now, in this shoe, the midsole is where that quality really shines, and it's also where the outsole and the upper meet. It's really a nice kind of synthesis, to use a kind of... It's a nice kind of meeting of the two places, and, and this really, really shines in this shoe. What they've done is they've used a triple density EVA foam. Now, in a lot of shoes, you'll have a single density EVA foam, and you'll have a rock plate. But a lot of times that rock plate, not all the time, but a lot of times that rock plate can sacrifice some flexibility and can certainly sacrifice ground feel. What Topo's done is that basically there are, th as again, three different densities of EVA that kind of are progressive in their density. So you're going to slow down. So if you think about if you're on the interstate or something like this and you see those barrels over to the side where you are coming up to an exit like this. And what the point of those is, those sand and water filled barrels, is when you hit the first one, it begins to slow you down. And as you get to each progressive barrel, it slows you down in succession. That's kind of the principle behind the triple density EVA on the Tobo MT. What it does is as something, whether it's a crag or a rock or a stick or something like that, as something is going to approach the foot, it's going to slow down that impact. Of course, this is happening you know, like that in a split second, but it's not just a hard rock plate where you're kind of going to skim off of it or bounce off of it. This is really going to impact the foot and you're going to be aware of it. You're going to feel this thing, but it's not going to hurt you. That's kind of the point of the three density EVA. Really smart design that I really like a lot. As always, we talked a little bit about the drop. This shoe, as it should be with its kind of minimalist and natural running pedigree, has a two millimeter drop. It's a 19 millimeter stack in the heel and a 17 millimeter stack height in the forefoot. So really nice drop there. I really like that. Um, one of the things that I'm curious about that I think, I, you know, I don't have enough miles in this. As of right now, I have about 60 miles, so I don't have enough miles to really truly speak to the lifespan of it. I can speak to the durability of it because I beat the heck out of the shoe, but I can't really speak to the lifespan. But one thing that I was thinking about when kind of contemplating and hypothesizing about the lifespan of the shoe, one thing I think that may be really to its advantage is that triple density EVA. What's interesting is that not only is that EVA protecting the shoe and the wearer from outside influences like sticks or rocks or all the other things that we mentioned, but it's also protecting the EVA from itself because it's not a singular impact on a single density of EVA, it's going to slow that down and wear less on the EVA. So that's actually a really interesting thing and I'd be really curious to see just how long these will last. So if I get to the point where I can break these down, I'll let you know how we got there and how they're performing. Keeping with the quality of this shoe, let's talk about the upper. Now, one of the great parts of this upper is that it's using a new technology that we've all, we all know about, but I'm not sure that we've all seen that it's been kind of used in running shoes. Really cool thing. Most of the time you'll see bonding like this and it's used with heat bonding or welding or molding or whatever. In this shoe, the strapping in the support structure of this shoe is actually 3D printed onto the shoe. Really freaking cool. Now what that allows for is it allows for even more weight breakdown. It, it gets rid of even more weight. Now heat bonding in general, heat molding is pretty minimal in terms of weight, but this saves even a little more and keeps really all the bonding on the outside. A lot of times heat, heat bonding or molding has to go through the upper to be effective, but not in this case. This stuff is 3D printed on. Really, really cool feature. I'll hold it to the camera. Maybe you can see it a little more closely there. 
really great stuff. Now, one of the coolest parts of this for me is the amount of foam that is up here. I know that sounds like a very weird thing, but I'm quite picky when it comes to how much foam. A lot of times you'll see something with no foam, or you'll see something with too much foam, and just really overstuffed around the collar and the tongue and all that kind of stuff. This has the perfect amount of foam for my foot. Really very comfortable. As you can see, there's not a lot going on back there. There's not really a heel counter to speak of, but there's just not a lot of foam. You can see right there. It's really pleasant on the foot, and the fabric they've used to overlay it is almost kind of a neoprene-like fabric, which is really, really very comfortable. Now, the downside to this foam is that it's quite a bit dense. Um, it's not very heavy, but what that makes for is it kind of absorbs water quite a bit. Um, I wonder if that's something they're going to work on. It doesn't make it super, super heavy, but it is something that can add some squishiness if you're running in wet conditions. I have been running wet conditions. It's been either dry or muddy or simply snowy. Um, but it can hold on to moisture, I've noticed a little bit. Not a huge deal, not a deal breaker, but definitely something to be aware of. Um, additionally, the fact that the midsole, as you can see here, it does come up a little bit, just about that much, just a couple millimeters, above the actual footbed, which is not going to allow water to drain out this way either. Um, I think that a really easy solution to that would be to cut down this, the kind of side section of the midsole that comes up around the, the base of the shoe here, but that may compromise the structure a little bit. So I'm curious to see how Topo addresses that moving forward. The tongue, I do really like the tongue of this shoe. It's gusseted right up to about there. What's really cool about this tongue is that, you know, they have the guide loop that we're all familiar with on pretty much any shoe you wear that's generally right there. Not only has Topo included that one, but they've also included a secondary one down here below, which really keeps the tongue in place, not a lot of tongue slippage between that and the gusseting of the tongue, this thing's really not going anywhere. Um, you got the tab pulls on the back here and this 3D printing that pulls back from the toe bumper. Here's the toe bumper of the outsole coming up over the toe, but this also adds structure. Now, one thing you're gonna notice, and we're gonna get right into the fit of this shoe here, is that this toe box is awesome. Look at that toe box. Your shoe, your feet rather, have plenty of room to splay this way. They've got room to wiggle up and down and add to that the fact that the 3D printing, as you can see here, kind of props up that fabric on the front of the shoe. What that does is that it really gives you that sensation of having more room. So that's really nice. Through the midfoot, it fits me very comfortably. I have a tragically average foot. Um, there's nothing wide or narrow about my foot. It's just very average. There's plenty of room for me. Very, very comfortable through here. And there's enough room to snug down. You can see there's plenty of room through the throat to cinch down on a more narrow foot. And you've probably got a half inch to an inch of play, half inch on each side, about an inch of play for a more wide foot. Now, in the heel, again, no heel counter to speak of. It's just kind of that 3D printing is creating the stability features in that foot. Um, excuse me, in the heel, but what's great about it is it's a nice heel cup. So because of that foam that I mentioned earlier, it really feels like your heel is seated nicely down in something that's very, very comfortable and is gonna really become a part of your foot. One more thing that you should know about this shoe is that it is light. At 8.6 ounces in my size 11s here, this is light. And let me remind you, it's a trail shoe, 8.6 ounces. Really well done there. It's very impressive weight for a trail shoe. Again, a pure trail shoe. Yes, they call it a hybrid shoe, but I consider it to be a pure trail shoe. Does a great job with that weight, so well done there. I've been mentioning the ride here and there throughout this review because I think that all the parts are so inextricably linked to the ride, including the outsole, the midsole, and the upper. So for me, the ride is really great. On a road, it's got great full foot ground feel. You're gonna feel it front to back all the way with no big gaps. The flat lugs and the fact that there's no real carved out instep has a lot to do with that. Now, on a trail, I think it does a great job. If you're on a more technical trail, that's something like a steep with a bunch of rocks or gravel or some of those things that you may see in a Killian Journey highlight reel, um, you may have a little bit of a hard time because there are no real cleats on this. So it does a good job on pretty much all trail. It's great for a light hiker, um, but on really, really technical trail, you know, as you would expect in a shoe that doesn't have cleat like lugs, it's not going to be as kind of great as it would be if it had a more luggy kind of cleaty type of lug on it. Now, here's the thing that threw me the most about the Topo MT. You know, we talk about shoes a lot on Gears TV, and one of the things that we consistently come up to is, well, a price is probably going to be around $125, $150 for a high-end shoe. I was 
entirely thrown by the price point of this shoe. Now you would expect $150 maybe. Super great quality. It's going to be really durable. Uh, it does a nice job. And if the lifespan is anything like what I think it might be, it's, it's going to be a great shoe. Lots of miles for your dollar. Here's the thing. Guess the price. It's only $100. And that's straight from Topo. $100 crazy price on this shoe seriously i can't believe that it's only a hundred dollars um it's currently really available through mainly rai but you can find it other places but a hundred dollars hundred hundred dollars crazy one of the advantages of this shoe being the way that it is with its lay flat lug system its triple density eva and the like i think this is a shoe that's really approachable by absolutely anyone if you're somebody who's kind of making that transition from roads to trails or you want to get on more trails and simply need an excuse to do so this is a good shoe for that that lay flat those lay flat lugs are really going to run nicely on the road they may wear a bit more quickly than you might want them to but what they're going to do is allow you to be on that road to and from the trail and feel comfortable and then get on the trail and really kick some ass definitely a shoe worth trying and at a hundred dollars how could you pass it up so if you've got a second don't worry, there's no split toe as you can see here. Get some Topo MTs on your feet and try them out. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Gears TV. Please like and favorite this video. Leave any questions or comments in the comments section below. I'd love to hear from you, so let us know what questions and comments you have. If you would like to subscribe to this channel, we would be eternally grateful. So please click the subscribe button that you're going to see right here. In fact, here's a subscribe button right over top of my face. Click that subscribe button, please. Also, please visit Gearist.com. Take a look at our reviews. Let us know what you think. Thanks so much for watching, guys. We'll see you next time. Hey there, guys. Thanks so much for watching this episode of Gearist TV. As I mentioned, please subscribe to this channel by clicking that beautiful blue subscribe button right in front of your face there. Click on over to Gearist.com. Take a look around. And while you're at it, take a look at these two videos that are right here. It's good stuff. We promise. Thank you again so much for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.